Well, folks, look at what we got. I've just taken Helga in for her big 18,000 mile service, although she's a couple of thousand late. And I've been given this, the new BMW F850GS. A couple of people have asked about it, so I thought, rather than take the new 1250 out as the courtesy bike, I'd give this one a hurl, because I've got something big planned for the 1250. Hang on, what's that? What's going on here? Sorry, can you see now? Can you see? Hi. Yeah, I've got something big planned for the, uh, the 1250 test. But anyway. Wow! Wow, that was close. Okay. So, first off, the difference is the weight is much more top heavy. Significantly different than the boxer engine on the 1200 and the new 1250. Obviously the weight's a little bit higher up there, as you can see, as it goes over. Ooh, anyway, let's start that again. So, got to admit, doesn't really tickle my watsits when I start the engine. It's not the boxer engine, but doesn't sound much now, but as you get moving, it's got quite a nice roar to it. Now, this is bit too soft for me so the old suspension button same as on the big GS uh, set that into dynamic push and hold uh, set it into rider and luggage which firms it right up I like a nice firm ride so to speak modes it's on rain road dynamic enduro right I want it on dynamic into dynamic Bosh there we go mirrors are all set let's go so I'll be honest with you, I've already ridden this back from the dealership to here. But they've done the service so quickly. I was going to do a bit of a ride down to Stonehenge. Got a, a friend that's, he has moved down that neck of the woods. So I was going to ride down there and do a good old test ride on her. But the dealership, Cooper's BMW Tunbridge Wells, awesome place. They have done such a good job on the service. I think it's Kim, lovely lady there that does the, the mechanic work, the technician. Well, the folks down there at Cooper's have got Helga all done, ready for me to pick up. So first thing you notice, compared to the big 1200, the 850 lacks the grunt that you've got on the bigger 1200. Obviously it's not as big an engine, it's a different engine. It just hasn't got the, uh, the grunt that the big brother or sister has. Now the quick shifter is beautiful. This is chain driven, unlike the shaft driven 1200, 1250. But the quick shifter and the blipper, it's up and down, is really good, it's really smooth. Good job. BMW really seem to have nailed that. Mine's quite clunky on Helga now, but I think that's probably due to it needing a big service, new oils and stuff. I don't know, I'll find out when I pick her up. Seating positions, very familiar to, to any GS really. Obviously it's a little bit smaller, not significantly. I don't feel like I've got, well I don't have the weather protection, the wind protection that you get. This is only a little screen on this, I'm assuming you can get a bigger screen. But you definitely feel the wind blast a lot more on the road and it's just not as much protection. This thing comes with heated grips, the BMW ones are fantastic. I know I'm sounding like a BMW fanboy here, and to be honest, I kind of am now. I wasn't before, but they do have their proverbial brown sticky stuff in a bag. Now that's something I don't like. This doesn't have the telly lever suspension that the bigger GSs have, so you get that diving when you apply the brakes. You know, on the bigger GS's, when you hit the brakes, the whole bike just sort of sinks down. Whereas conventional bikes, this one included, when you hit the front brakes, the front forks compress and the front of the bike dips down like that. And when you're used to the telelever suspension, it's a little bit disconcerting. It's not an issue, it's really not, but it just feels disconcerting because you're not used to it. 
I didn't like the telly lever when I first got got on it, but you get used to it. Brakes don't feel particularly good. They're Brembo's, but they just don't feel that great, to be honest. They feel like they'll slow me down, but not stop. But I think I recall saying that. Oh no, that was the Zero I said that about, wasn't it? It's probably a combination of the different suspension on the front. With the telly lever, when you're braking, it just feels like everything's going to the disc, you know? It's stopping you. Whereas with this, when you hit the brakes, the front is is compacting. The front forks are, are compacting down. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just a different sensation when you apply the brakes. Is making me feel like the brakes aren't as good. I'm sure they are. Yeah, they're different in the C, difference in CC there. You just notice it, you know, when you go for, a, you go for an overtake and you twist the throttle, it's just not that instant woomph, that you get with the bigger that's a technical term by the way woomph. but it's not bad I'm sure this bike would, would suit many many people if you're not used to the big 1200 perhaps you don't like the big physical size of the 1200 like the Tiger 800 the Tiger 800 is a great bike but for me if you've ridden the 800 and you've ridden the big Tiger 1200 for me why would I go for the 800 you know, the 1200's just got so much more on offer. But I know the 800 is a firm favourite with many, many people. And those people might want to try this, the F850 GS. I haven't tried the smaller GS's, so I don't know what to compare this to in the GS range other than the 1200. But I have ridden the Tiger 800. This feels quite similar to that, to be honest with you. But this has got the stock can on it, but it has a lovely roar when you're pulling away. The BMW heated grips, they are like the surface of the sun. This thing comes with three levels. My GS has two, this has three. And I've got it set on three, but then I've got my winter Knox Zero gloves on, which are a little bit thicker. Now I'm hoping the camera setup's okay, I haven't used it in quite a while, I haven't been vlogging for ages. Just because I've got such a backlog of videos to get through, there's been no need for me to, to vlog or anything. So I'm hope. come on. So I'm hoping the orientation is alright and the screen's not all twisted. I noted on, on some of the, the Pico's vids, the screen's all twisted, it's all at a slant. I'm really sorry about that folks. I think this one should be sorted, but again, I can't remember the last time I used this camera. What I've noticed in some of the footage from Spain though, is the audio seems to be going on the drift, unfortunately, the, the Ghost S I use. So I'm hoping everything is still working. I am now seriously having to look at an alternative now to the Drift Ghost S for my moto vlogging, because this is pretty much coming to the end of its run. And to be honest with you, the technology in this, it, it's getting superseded, you know? I need 60 frames per second, I need real good 1080 minimum quality with a high bit rate. The bit rate on the, the Ghost S is, it's a bit dated now. The GoPros smash all over this. The only issue with the GoPros that's put me off has been the, uh, the audio, because you have to use that great big box adapter thing. And I hate that. But, looking at the likeable riders vid on uh, the new Hero 7, the inbuilt stabilisation on that thing is just amazing. So check out Sean's video, The Likeable Rider, there'll be a link up there. Have a look at his vid, see what you think. Obviously, please come back to my channel afterwards. <laughs> Can't believe that, I've just sent you off my channel. What a doof. Anyway, so I hope the audio and everything's all set up okay. There's obviously a lot more wind noise, because I'm not getting the protection off the front. So that might be affecting the audio as well. I don't know, we'll see. Find out when I look back at the footage. So what's the ride like? Well, as I said, I've got this set at the uh, dynamic suspension setting, which is much firmer, much more higher up. I've got it set as a rider with luggage at the back, because I'm a bit of a fat boy, so and I like it quite stiff in the rear, as Barham would say. So yeah, I've stiffened things right up here. You can go one more, you can go uh, rider and pillion, which would make it super firm. The ride feels good, actually, on the road. These are not bad roads around here, actually. The surface isn't too bad at all. The odd little pothole here and there. But this uh, this ride feels good. I feel quite connected with the road. feel like I can feel what the road surface is doing underneath the tyres. 
Incidentally, these are the Michelin Anarchies that are on this. I'm not a favourite of the Anarchies, I've got to say. You know, they're affectionately known as Panarchies. Some people love them, many people don't. I'm not a fan of them, to be honest. For me, the Metzler Tourant's next is the better tyre for those sort of cross tyres. But again, tyres are tires are a minefield. It's entirely down to personal choice. One man's gold is another man's lead. So the dash on here, it's exactly like the uh, big brother and sisters and the big old GS. It's a lovely clear LCD dash. Too clear really, because obviously I've had to stick a sticker over the speedo on mine. It's there for all to see. That little 40 there is because I connected, because I was going to be going out towards Stonehenge to my mate's uh, new house. I've never been there before. And this hasn't got the cradle set up for the sat-nav, the BMW Nav 5, Nav 6, whatever it is you want to go for. So I was going to have to use the inbuilt sat-nav on the LCD which connects to your phone. So I connected my phone up and it's all set, synced up to my um, the BMW connected app to navigate with. But obviously as I'm not going to Stonehenge anymore and I'm going back to the dealership, I know where I'm going. Like your sat-navs, this shows what the registered speed limit is for the road that you're on. So that's what that little square there is. What else can I say about this bike? Uh, controls are all exactly the same as the bigger GS. Uh, you've got menu functions, you've got your ABS and traction control light, you've got suspension settings, there's hazard, there's um, your fogs. This hasn't got any fogs uh, attached actually, the spots. Indicators horn, it's got cruise control, it's got the um, ride wheel, the connected wheel, rotating wheel on the left here, which lets you flick through the various choices on the screen. LCD itself shows um, it's got fuel range, what ride mode you're in, uh, headlight status, whether it's main beam, day beam, temperature, it's got uh, you know, heated grips level. Because I've got the phone connected, you can see down here, it's got the battery indicator for your phone, what your uh, signal is like, signal strength on the phone itself, clock over on the right hand side, gear indicator above, and right across the top is the Kraken Rev indicator. Over on the right hand side you have your ignition, you've got a rider mode button and your heated grips selector. As with the bigger GS's, it comes with a 12 volt DIN outlet, so you can charge things up on the go, should you wish. Mirrors look pretty much exactly the same on, as on the, the 1200s, not bad at all these. They do vibrate a little bit once you get up to higher speeds, but they're still usable, no issue with that. I tell you what, it's got quite a nice turn of speed. That's quite impressive, I wasn't expecting that from your sort of 30 mile an hour up to your nationals, no problem at all. Oh, I'm back into a 40. Yeah, we're just going over quite a few potholes there and manhole covers, etc. Standard sort of typical bumpy British roads and that's not bad at all. The ride, obviously I've got quite a bit of padding in my ass, but uh, yeah, seat's good, feels very much like the big GS. In fact, it's probably the... Oh, brake. Sheesh. They don't instill me with confidence. I wonder if it's because it's new. How many miles has this bike got on it? Let me have a little look. 3,050. Now these brakes should be bed, uh, bed in by now. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. They don't feel like they're going to stop me. Maybe I just got to get used to that. Well, I don't. I'm giving this back and getting Helga soon. So. Yeah, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed the NEC vid that I did. I'm really sorry there wasn't much of the show. I just, it was awesome that the response I got there was so good so many people came up and it, but it just took up all my time so I just I literally had like 40 odd minutes at the end to have a little wander and I had a couple of people I had to speak to as well so I didn't I didn't even get around the whole show to be honest I only really had a look and a quick look and a couple of halls stay there oh I hate that bit but there's going to be plenty of other vids out there of, of people's time at the show so but uh, yeah thanks very much for those of you that watched and left feedback on the latest NEC vid and those of you that came up thank you so much it was great to meet everybody it really was there's some big things coming for the channel next year all going well a couple of little trips away 
that are provisionally being spoken about and I've got a few ideas myself of what I want to do but as ever it comes down to finances and time away from work right that's me at uh, sort of motorway speeds and it already sounds like there's a tornado going through the helmet so I don't even know if you'll be able to hear this my body feels like it's got quite a lot of wind protection but the head there's definitely a lot more air going around Perfectly capable. Oh, sorry, your mile munching, bigger roads, motorways, that sort of stuff. No issue with sitting here on this bike. But what's it actually look like? Why don't we pop somewhere and go and have a little look? Over here. Right, sorry, lamb chops and TMF. I'm going to be nicking your style here. This is, folks, BMW F850 GS. It's not a bad looking bike. Not bad at all. You see, it comes with the, uh, the spoked wheels. I am a firm favourite of them now. I used to love the cast uh, alloy ones, but I really like the spokes. They are a major pain in the bum to clean, though. Got the stock exhaust on it. But it doesn't sound bad at all. It's got Brembo's front and rear. Don't know what ones they are though. Yeah, they don't instill me with a great amount of confidence to be honest. I'm not really one for knowing all the technical specifications to be honest with you of bikes. It's, I probably should do, but I don't I don't regard myself as a, a sort of technical reviewer. I kind of like, I just go by, I don't know anything technical about bikes, I don't know about the mechanics of them in the slightest, I can just about do my chain, and now I've got the big GS, I don't even need to worry about that anymore. So for me, when I review a bike, it's how it rides, it's how it feels, it's how it looks, those sort of things really. If you want the technical spec, check out the BMW website, I'll put a link somewhere, the spec sheet will be there for you to see. Or have a look at TMFs, he does fantastic technical reviews, as does Lamb Chops actually. Fanboy! Yeah, right, let's take some proper pictures. Pictures all done. These are so nice and warm. They're quite old now, these gloves. I think they're probably about three, four years old. But the Knox Out Dry Zero, I think they're Zero Two, these are. Zero Two gloves. <sighs> Beautiful for the winter. Right, are we still recording? This looks like it's still on. As does this. Just compared to the big GS, it just sounds like I've just put money in this slot and it's warmed up, you know? Da, 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 da. Up it comes. Hmm. It's a good bike. It is a good bike, but it's not the big brother or sister. Uh, right, that's about as much off-road as I'm going to do. <laughs> exit. There's an exit. Yeah. Just sounds like a bit of a pop-pop machine. Oh, it's that horrible time of year. All the crud on the roads is now just get cold, wet and slimy. It feels nice and nimble this though. But it's weird, the, the bigger GS, because with the boxer engine all that weight's low down, it just feels more stable and planted and sort of flickable. This feels lighter, but at the same time not quite as manoeuvrable, it's weird. Now that is an impressive looking truck in front, it's like one of those overlanders, but overland trucks, but a limousine version pop-up roof tent as well. Oh, all the gear. So, I have signed up for, after meeting with them at the NEC, at Motorcycle Live, I have signed up for the IAM course. Yes, I've done it. I've got a GS, I've got a beard, and I've now joined IAM. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I said to you before, after that latest crash, I just thought, do you know what? That latest crash, it sounds terrible, isn't it? I just thought, it's not going to do me any harm whatsoever to get some additional training. Deep down we all think, ah, I've got this nailed, I know what I'm doing. I plainly don't, 
and I don't like the way it's now affecting my riding, it's affecting my confidence and to be honest at times I don't enjoy the ride like I used to so I want to go and I want to get more training, more tuition I just want to get better, get better at it, bring up my confidence again without just going to do track days because all track days do is make me go quicker you know and that is not the key to this for me I want to be safe it's not going to do any harm to do it so that's the idea I'm going to do it I'm going to vlog it so you be there with me we'll go through this together yeah turn into right hippie isn't it? but anyway I digress back to this bike what am I thinking this thing's got like a, a beast of an overrun on it you accelerate and then roll off the throttle the overrun's lovely it's, it's almost sounds like a big v4 or something weird that's my big V engine noise. Can you guess what it is yet? Oh, can't do that. Oh, Jimmy Savile, eh? Jingle, jingle, jingle. Lots of lovely jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. I probably just had my channel banned and lost three quarters of my subscriptions. Sheesh. Blimey, it's loud in the helmet. <laughs> I hope you can hear me okay. So what is this bike like? Well, if you're coming, having not ridden the big 1200 so either the likes of the GS 1200, the Triumph Explorer 1200 uh, the big Multistradas, anything like that if you're coming to this having never ridden a bigger sort of trail bike or adventure style bike before this will probably suit you however, if you're coming from the bigger machines to this it's going to feel a little bit like it's, it's sort of missing something really uh, about 400 cc's to be honest with you <laughs> it just doesn't feel like the finished deal I don't like the standard suspension on it having ridden the telelever I much prefer that the brakes don't feel up to the job I'm sure they are but they just don't feel like they've got the stopping power of the bigger machines acceleration is good but again it just lacks that oomph that the bigger engines have got naturally speaking the various different ride modes uh, and suspension settings are great exactly like the bigger models absolutely nothing to criticize there for me seating positions great the pegs are a nice height gear changing with the blipper and the quick shifter is like butter really is good the fueling feels lovely very smooth you can hold a constant throttle with it no complaints there at all it is a perfectly reasonable machine this looks wise I think it's, it's not bad it, it looks like the teenager version of, of the bigger GS it's just a slightly smaller machine as you can tell I wouldn't spend my own money on one of these I, I, I just wouldn't it will definitely suit some people just not me I'm just gonna pop back to the dealership now so I'll find out the prices and I'll put them up now and that is about all I have to say about that so what do you think have you ridden one of these have you ridden the new 850 GS have you ridden any of the, the previous incarnations what you like, what you dislike, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like on the vid, folks. And if you've not subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button for me. It really does help. Let me know what you like and dislike about the vids. Is there a machine that you would like me to test ride? Let me know. Can't promise. I don't really have any relationships with any manufacturers. I just sort of see odd dealership lets me take out bikes here and there. So if there's anything you'd like to see me try, let me know. And I'll do what I can. Here we are, back at Cooper's. So, folks, look after yourselves. There's Helga there, look. Aww. Look after yourselves. Get out there on the bikes during the winter, when you can. Take good care on the roads. But remember, live your life. See ya!